Hello chess lovers, I have an interesting game for you played by Soviet chess grandmaster David Bronstein and M20 computer, which was designed and manufactured in the USSR by the Scientific Research Institute of Electronic Machines. The game was played in 1963 at Moscow Mathematics Institute. Let's see how good were computers in chess at that time. Bronstein started with e4 and e5 by m20. f4, Bronstein goes for king's gambit. e takes f4, king's gambit accepted knight f3, knight f6, e5 and knight g4. Well, not a good square for the knight. Usually in this position, black is placing the knight on h5 square. But instead, after e5, we see knight g4. And now white can simply kick away the knight by playing h3 and then play d4 establish a strong center. But instead, after knight g4, Bronstein played d4, which allows black knight to step on e3 square. We see g5. Black wants to save the pawn on f4 square, but of course this is creating weaknesses in black's king side. Actually, this g5 is not a good idea in this line, when the knight stands on g4 square, knight c3, knight e3 and queen e2. It's not quite clear why Bronstein didn't capture on e3 and then he can easily win back the pawn on e3 square, but instead after knight e3 we see queen e2, knight takes f1 and instead of recapturing on f1, Bronstein played a very aggressive move, he placed the knight on e4 square, now the knight is eyeing on f6 square. Knight e3. M20 plays greedily, trying to save a piece, but this actually gives white dangerous attacking chances and advantage. Now comes knight f6 check, king e7 and bishop d2. Well, not quite clear why Bronstein finally didn't capture on e3 and then on g5. Of course, white has a dangerous attack and advantage, but instead after king e7 we see bishop d2, allowing knight takes c2 check. I guess Bronstein was simply having fun. King f2 and black knight also captures on a1. Now the best move is capturing on g5 and then on f4, but instead after knight takes a1 we see knight d5 check, king e6, already this is losing, king e8 could have been better and after knight f6 check king e7, finally white should capture on g5. Of course if white doesn't want to draw the game, but instead after knight d5 check we see king e6 and this is becoming very dangerous, queen c4 threatening some discovered checks. b5 trying to lure away the queen but now comes a beautiful knight sacrifice on g5, knight takes g5 check, queen takes g5, knight takes c7 check, first white is opening up the c file, king e7, knight d5 check, king e6 and now we see knight takes f4 double check, opening up the bishop's diagonal as well and after king e7 we see knight d5 check, king e8. Now if king e6 then after knight c7 check king e7, already there is no pawn on f4, white can capture on g5 and then checkmate black king. That's why after knight d5 check, m20 played king e8, here comes queen takes c8 check, queen d8, knight c7 check, king e7 and now comes the bishop, bishop b4 check, d6, bishop takes d6 check and after queen takes d6 we see this beautiful checkmate on the board, look at this. As for me, I think that taking into consideration the fact that the game was played in 1963, M20 was doing pretty well. Of course, it will be also very interesting to know your opinion about this encounter and the strength of M20. Thanks for watching and I'm waiting for your comments and questions. Good luck!